everything that Officer Oliver is about to say on the witness stand is under oath. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. It looks like a man who is relieving himself on the side of the building. That is indecent exposure. That is a potential misdemeanor charge. Well, the problem with that is... Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite show on the internet, Raw Law Unfiltered, with your favorite host, the DUI Guy Plus. Today, we're going to be doing a video of mine that I have recorded many, many moons ago that has actually since went viral on YouTube, and I'm going to be talking about how the video came about. What was I doing in court? This is a video titled, Watch a Cop Get Pulverized in Court. And it's a video from February 16th of 2022. The police officer who is on the stand, his name is Shannon Oliver. He is with the Eddyville Police Department. Officer Oliver stopped and arrested my client for operating a motor vehicle under the influence. He is being charged with a DUI and this is his jury trial. What you don't see off screen is six men and women who are determining his guilt or innocence. Let's watch. Commonwealth, you may call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. I call Officer Shannon. You would raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Please have a seat and state your name for the record. Sure. So the first thing that the judge does, as you can obviously see, is she asks her to raise his right hand and to swear an oath because everything that Officer Oliver is about to say on the witness stand is under oath and he could be subject to perjury charges if at any point he changes his story. Shannon Oliver. Thank you, questioning. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> First, the questioning begins by the prosecutor. His name is Lee Wilson. He is the elected county attorney in Lyon, L-Y-O-N, Lyon County, Kentucky. If you would, please tell the ladies and gentlemen how you're employed. I'm employed with the Edible Police Department. Shannon, do you recall whether or not you had an occasion to be working on or about August the 21st of 2020? Yes. What the prosecutor is doing right now is called laying the foundation, okay? You can't just start asking questions, and what time did you arrest Mr. So-and-so? You know, you can't just launch into it because I'll immediately object. I'll say, objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. For those of you who have seen the Johnny Depp trial, you know that you can't just go guns a-blazing and start asking questions. You first have to lay a foundation upon which your case will be built. So first, Lee Wilson asked Officer Oliver, are you employed? Yes. Who are you employed with? The Eddyville Police Department. Okay, I want to take you back and talk about blah, blah, blah. Watch. And on that evening, do you recall whether or not you came into contact with Mr. Raymond Fernandez, the defendant in this case? I did. Shannon, were you just working general patrol that night? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have an opportunity to observe Mr. Fernandez when you were on patrol? Uh, I did. Okay. And tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what, if anything, drew your attention to Mr. Fernandez? Again, as you can see, the prosecutor is still building that foundation. He's still laying the groundwork. Mr. Fernandez is the client. And the reason this is on video is because this is all public record. And the police officer is about to tell us what he saw, what he heard, what he smelled, etc. I was traveling northbound on 93 South coming into town. Um, I was passing the car wash, which as I'm sure probably most of you know is tore down now. Um, as I was passing the car wash, I noticed that there was a vehicle parked off to the side. As I continued to drive by, I noticed that there was a male uh, standing outside of the car wash and he was urinating on the side of the building. So I drove to the next entrance, turned around. That is a very important fact. The officer is driving around, minding his own business, and all of a sudden, at the time when this incident occurred in 2020, around about August or September, and this trial on February 16th of 2022, the officer is testifying about the reason uh, Mr. Fernandez caught his attention. So as he's passing by this car wash that has since been torn down, as the officer just testified, he is kind of getting, oh, it looks like a man who is relieving himself on the side of the building. That is indecent exposure. That is a potential misdemeanor charge. 
Well, the problem with that is he now has probable cause to come over and investigate what is happening, right? The defense, i.e. me and my team, don't really have a leg to stand on to ask for the court to dismiss this case based on lack of probable cause because he wasn't driving or because he wasn't behind the wheel of a car or he wasn't in this car at time of the DUI stop because for DUI, you need to have two things. You need to have driving and you have to be under the influence, right? He's relieving himself on the side of the gas station. That's not probable cause, your honor. Not so fast. That's not exactly how things work. Let's continue watching. In the parking lot so I could go back and speak with the individual. <laughs> As I was doing that, I noticed that that vehicle was coming out of the car wash and made a left turn onto 93 South to the stoplights. And there you have it. Now, Mr. Fernandez is back in the car. Now, I don't know if this was the officer's intentional or simply unintentional result of his conduct, but he waited for Mr. Fernandez to get back in his car and now follow him and now, boom, we have driving. You just lost your argument, counselor. Uh, then made a left turn westbound on a 62 where I conducted a traffic stop. When I approached the vehicle, that's when I spoke with Mr. Fernandez. And let me pause you for just a okay. minute. Did you initially do a traffic stop on Mr. Fernandez because of something about his driving or to discuss the urinating in public with him? I was just going to discuss the urinating okay. issue. Uh, uh, so we approach? <clears throat> so this is one of the most important things that you will ever learn from any of my videos when it comes to cross-examination of police officers. People ask me day in and day out, is this allowed, Larry? Is this permitted, Larry? Is this legal, Larry? And then they will proceed to ask their question. Here's the problem with courtroom work. Everything is permitted unless the judge already made a ruling ahead of time that it is not permitted or like what you just saw two minutes into the video itself, I make an objection. Now, what you're about to see is one of the most important things that you will ever learn from my videos, and that is the simple objection about refreshing one's recollection. This is an evidence tool used in courtrooms all across America, and it is something that we are taught in law school. It is a very, very simple rule, and if you don't follow it, you are going to be in some trouble, but if you follow it, you, on either side, if you're, it's a civil case, a criminal case, it doesn't matter traffic offense, this is always going to be used by citizens like yourself. Here it is. As you saw just a few moments ago, Officer Oliver keeps putting his head down. He is referring to his citation. He is reading from his citation. He's reading facts from the citation. Now, here's the problem. The citation is not evidence. It is not going to be admitted into evidence. If the prosecution makes a motion to admit it into evidence, that motion is going to be denied because I'm going to object and I'm not even going to have to object. The, the judge is going to look at the prosecutor and say, no, I'm not admitting that because that's not evidence. It has not been certified. It has not been authenticated. And it is impossible to authenticate a what's called a hearsay piece of paper right? Someone wrote it. We don't know who. Yes, it does have Officer Oliver's name on the bottom, but there's no guarantee that he's the one that wrote it, even though he can testify to it. So what I'm about to do and what you're about to see is I'm about to ask the judge, your honor, I believe that he is reading from something and I have no problem if the prosecution wants to refresh his recollection. So let's say he doesn't have the piece of paper in front of him. This incident happened in September of 2020 or August of 2020. We are now in February of 2022. I don't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, let alone if I'm the police officer, I'm gonna remember all the details of the happenstance. Now, good police officers review this information well before court. They review this information well before the trial ever happens or they'll review it again and again a few minutes before the trial is to begin and then they put away the piece of paper and they testify all from memory. But here's the key. It must be from memory. If he doesn't remember something, the prosecution can always say, Your Honor, would it help? It would go something like this. Officer Oliver, would looking at the citation refresh your recollection as to what happened that night? Yes, it would. Okay, Your Honor, if I may approach the witness. Yes, you may. And then the prosecutor would walk up to the police officer and go, Here you go officer and give him a copy of the citation and he would silently read it to himself and then the prosecutor would ask well did that refresh your recollection 
Uh, yes, it did. Okay. And the prosecutor walk right back over, grab the piece of paper back from him, go back to his desk and re-ask the question. Now that your re recollection is refreshed, can you tell us blah, blah, blah. That's the way it's supposed to work. Now, prosecutors tried this sneaky, sneaky trick all the time. I have done this in countless cases and I will continue to do it. I've only had maybe a couple of prosecutors who learned and they stopped doing it. But for the most part, anytime I'm in a new jurisdiction and we do have a reputation in the state of being fighters and aggressive and winning cases. So the police officer is going to get caught off guard. Now what it does, it achieves multiple different goals, both for you and for your client. Okay. First and foremost, you are throwing the officer off because they're sitting there, they're just reading and the piece of paper that's right in front of them is about to be taken away. I always wait to make that objection until they start reading it. Now they're thrown off. Now it's like, yoink, the piece of paper is yanked from their faces and now they have to testify from memory. And that's scary because you thought you're going to have a piece of paper there because you were sitting there, everything was fine. And all of a sudden it's gone. So now the officer is uncomfortable. Number two, you are protecting your client's interest because that piece of paper is not evidence. The court and the prosecutor and the cop must follow the rule of law. They must follow the law. If they don't follow the law, you call them out on it. Number three, the jury is now wondering, did the cop do something wrong? Because you came up there and you just won your objection. They see that because you said quietly, because a lot of, in Kentucky, we don't really do speaking objections. Speaking objections is when you are sitting at your table and from your table, you say, objection, your honor, blah, blah, blah. We don't really do those. We say, objection, your honor, may we approach? Sometimes if it's a simple one, objection relevance, you're not gonna walk up there because you wanna catch them right in the moment and you want the jury to hear it. But a lot of the times, if it's a complicated thing like this, you want to go, your honor, may we approach? This is exactly what I just did and we're about to resume in the video. Your honor, may we approach? I have a couple of things that I need to address to the court and let's see what I say. In bench conference mode, the jury cannot uh, hear us. And there are three players in front of the judge right now. On the right hand most side is the prosecutor, Lee Wilson. In the middle there, with the black striped tie is myself, defense attorney, and I'm the one leading the case, which means I am the first chair is what they call it. And my second chair is at the time current, now former associate Evan Bates. He is now a prosecutor with the Jefferson County Attorney's Office, and he's doing quite well from what I hear. So we approach and the judge turns on this noise, and this noise is basically it turns off the record for it to be heard in the courtroom. It is now limited to the bench and the record continues rolling, but the jury cannot hear any of this. And we're about to talk pretty quietly as you will see in a, in a second. I just want to make sure, um, I think I noticed the officer has something in his hands. It's on a piece of paper. I imagine it's a copy of the citation and maybe it's his own notes. I don't know what it is. I just want to make sure that he's not referring to anything. I think it is the citation. Okay. If we could just verify it. that it's a citation. It, it, what I would ask is that the citation be taken away from the officer. He may testify from his memory, but he may not refer to any notes unless it, refer, unless it uh, refreshes his recollection. Excuse me. Okay. Response? I think that's why he's got it there. I don't believe that he's looking at it. I just think that if he's called upon to look at a citation, he has it with him on the stand. Well, what I would prefer is if he doesn't remember a certain fact, that he may refer to the citation and he may ask for it because he, he does not remember a fact, but he may not simply continuously refer to the citation and see what happened on the night of the event of, of the events that transpired on August 21st, 2020. He must testify from memory, so says the law. I'm happy. He must testify from memory. That was the most important part in that whole objection that I said. I could have probably gotten there faster, but I'm trying to also build up the record and I'm trying to teach and inform the judge as to what she should do. Because a lot of times judges simply don't know. Judges are supposed to be informed, but a lot of the times they're not because they have so many different types of cases come before them. I never hate on my judges. I love almost all all of my judges. And the reason for that is because I know that I'm there to educate them. And if they see that I know the law, I understand the rules and I'm trying to guide them, they will usually listen because they also want to be guided and they want to make the right decision. 
So watch what happens. So, Your Honor, or I'm sorry, Shannon, whenever you initially pulled the gentleman over, was, was it for some traffic offense that he committed, or was it to address a something you were making on the side of the road? Oh, was just gonna... So, you see, uh, goal was achieved. The prosecutor is thrown off. Actually, I forgot about that one. The prosecutor is now also thrown off. The police officer is thrown off. Your client's rights are protected, number three. And most importantly, you just won your objection. And the jury saw that. The jury saw that something was yanked from him and was not given back. And now in their minds, they're thinking, is the prosecutor trying to play dirty? Is the prosecutor doing something they shouldn't be doing? You know, scratch of the chin, scratch of the head. I wonder, you know, you can't help but wonder. Uh, stay tuned, we're gonna continue this series. I'm going to be breaking these videos down for you into their constituent parts. And that way, you're no longer just gonna be watching a video on my cross-examinations and my courtroom activity, but you're also going to have a chance to learn what it is that I'm doing, why I'm doing what I'm doing, and how you may be able to apply these same concepts in your own courtroom work and your own speeding tickets, for example. Now remember, very important, everything that I'm saying in this video is not legal advice. There's a disclaimer on my channel that nothing that I say on my videos is legal advice. So please, please, please learn the rules of your jurisdiction, learn the rules of your state, and study them. Do not rely on a lawyer from Kentucky because what I'm saying is not legal advice and potentially may be misleading in your jurisdiction. But for the most part, everything I've done in this video should not be. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everybody.